Hey you guys, Matt Allen here. Welcome back to Tactical Bassin. Today, we're talking fall jerk baits. One of my favorite ways to catch bass. Throwing a jerk bait for aggressive bass in the fall is one of the most amazing things you can do as a bass angler. If it's not something you've experienced, you need to. You need to, one, because of how much fun it is. Two, because of how violent those fish get, and it's incredible to watch that happen. And three, because of the sheer size of the fish that you can catch doing it. A jerk bait, while not a particularly large lure, does an amazing job of catching giant fish. It will catch small fish, it will catch numbers of fish, and it will catch absolute giants, top end fish. The jerk bait is a very unique bait. You can throw them year round, but there's no question that fall is the peak. Fall and then again in the pre-spawn are both incredible. Now, you can throw it all year. So it's great during the fall transition. We've already been doing that. Through the fall, into the winter, back into the pre-spawn, and beyond. But fall, that's the heart of the bite. That's when you want to have jerk baits on deck all the time. Now the right jerk bait, you can see I've got a bunch of baits laying here. The right jerk bait depends on the circumstance. And we'll get into that. But First, I wanna talk jerkbait fishing in general. Why a jerkbait? Why should you be doing this? Why should you care? And then we'll talk about what different baits are for and how you can dial in a bite specifically for where you fish. The jerkbait in general is all about drawing a core response out of a bass. There are not a lot of baits that do that. We've talked about this. The tactical crank that Tim and I designed for cold water cranking, that draws a core feed response out of a bass. An A-rig, like it or not, is a bait that draws a core feed response out of a bass. Giant swim baits can do it. Another bait that does it is a jerk bait. The beauty of the jerk bait is that it does this incredible job of getting fish to feed even when they're dormant, even when they don't want to be aggressive. It pulls that core response out, but it does it to all sizes of fish, which is incredible, and that's what makes it so much fun. So fall jerk bait fishing, it can be done anywhere. I'll throw it all sorts of places, from paralleling bluff walls on a river system uh, to throwing over long tapering points, to fan casting out in a great wide open water. Uh, you know, if you've got spotted bass out there running bait fish in the open, throwing it in the open can be amazing. Uh, it's a multi-species bait. And then it also shines just in the backs of pockets. If, if bass are corralling bait fish in the back of a pocket, somebody else is throwing a top water, you can come in there with a jerk bait and mow those fish down. They're incredibly universal. Now, I will say there is not one jerk bait, just one, that I throw on a bluff wall and in open water and in two feet of water in the back of a cove, right? I have different baits for different situations, but the jerk bait as a whole is remarkable. If you're working them properly, the key to a jerk bait is aggressive starts and stops. If you're reeling the bait at all. So we've watched so much underwater footage of these baits. If you're one of the guys who's like, I throw a jerk bait, it just, it's not special for me. I don't crush them like you talk about. Hands down, I can already tell you what's wrong. What's wrong is the way you work the bait. The rods are critical. We'll get to that. The line is critical. We'll get to that. But what you need to understand is the dynamics of the bait, the start and stop motion is what gets these fish to react. You work that bait and then it sits there, it hovers in the middle of the water column and the fish come up to look. And when it darts again, they blast it. If it's stopped and then it starts a slow swim, they turn off. We've seen it dozens of times in underwater footage where we're, we're filming these fish and they're all fired up and their fins are moving and they're aggressive and they're about to do it and the bait does a little swim and they peel off. 
that is not the feed response. You need that hard start and stop. Achieving that is a combination of rod, line, and then of course, how you're working the bait. And how you work each bait differs slightly, but here's the gist of it. The larger the bill on the bait, so here, let me set this down. There's a World Diver, Shimano World Diver. There's a Mega Bass Vision 110 Plus One. See the size of the bills? The larger the bill, the more sharp but small my motions. The smaller the bill, the more aggressive I can be. Let's take a, a regular Mega Bass Vision 110. This old Damiki Slim Jack. See how small those bills are? Those are baits that I can hit much, much harder. I can be very aggressive with those baits. I can really snap the rod. It just has to do with how the bait reacts. So as a rule of thumb, the smaller the bill, the more harsh and aggressive you can be with that thing. And then of course the fish will tell you from there as the water cools off, we get much more subtle. Longer pauses in between the twitches. We might wait a second or two. We might wait four or five seconds. We might wait 10 to 20 seconds between single twitches. That has to do with the aggression of the fish. We'll get into that more as we go. But the jerkbait is incredible. You do need to learn this technique. If you plan to take bass fishing seriously, the jerkbait is a must in your arsenal because again, of its ability to trigger a feed response. It is a unique category and it can do something that other baits can't do. If you're slow pulling a worm on the bottom, you are reliant on a bass to see it or feel it, to come over, establish that yes, they want to eat that and eat it. If they're in a really negative mood, bad weather conditions, something else, they just don't want to eat it. So they don't. This is different. This is actually drawing something out of how they are hardwired and making them react. And that is special and that will catch you fish when traditional fishing methods won't. So let's jump into the baits themselves. I've got too many baits here, but really it's, it's a pretty small category uh, when you start listening to the differences. I'm not suggesting that you need all these. This is maybe half of my jerkbait boxes. I'm fanatical about jerkbaits. I've already established why. When I was growing up, there was not good information out there. The only way you knew if one jerkbait was better than another was to buy them all and go out and use them, right? So a lot of the baits that I would buy would get thrown one time and I'm like, that's not what I thought that was gonna do, that's junk. Into the box it goes forever. So I've got stacks of boxes because I had to buy everything to find out. I've been able to narrow it down. So early fall, I have a set of baits. And then the rest of fall into winter, I have a set of baits. And then I've got some niche baits beyond that. And then we're gonna talk color. I don't think you can see those over here, but that is a whole nother animal. And that is probably our largest focus today. That is information that is so overlooked. And I'm, we talked about it briefly about a month ago and I wanna talk about it in depth today because it will make a huge difference for you. So. Coming into fall, the beginning of fall, water temps are cooling down, bass are very aggressive. In a lot of lakes, I'm, I'm literally about to say they're chasing bait fish and I look over here, there's two great big blow ups. They're chasing shad right here. Early fall, they are all about the bait fish. They're corralling them, they're chasing them. Water temps are just starting to come down. So the fish are getting really aggressive. It's getting more comfortable for them. So they're willing to chase and run and corral bait and it can get wild. When that is happening, I like very aggressive jerk baits. I fish them quickly, not a lot of pauses. So I'll twitch, 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 right? A lot of aggressive moving, not a lot of sitting still because the fish are willing to run after it. I've got two baits basically that I really like for this category. The Jackal Re-Range, now I'm holding two of them. These are both a re-range. The difference in a lot of these baits 
is that you're going to have a regular lip, so this is the re-range, and then a bigger lip, that's the re-range MR, medium runner. Same bait though, so I'm gonna treat that as one. The only difference here is how deep do you tend to fish? Do you tend to fish along the bank? Throw a re-range. Do you tend to fish steeper walls? Do you tend to have fish that bust out in open water? Throw a medium runner, okay? But the bait itself is the same. So that's a simple decision that you can make. If you're not sure, maybe you want both. But most people aren't fishing a hundred different lakes a year like Tim and I do. So you don't need stacks of things for every situation. You kind of know your lake, you know which one fits. The benefit of a re-range is the sheer amount of flash that it gives off. It gives an incredible amount of flash. It has a ton of noise. It's a really good bait with a lot of drawing power. It will pull fish from a distance. And that flash, like in my hand, this very chromy color doesn't really speak to me personally. There are definitely prettier colors. But in the water, when it's throwing light and flashing, and you can actually see the light shine off that bait, if there's a little bit of sediment in the water, it'll be reflecting. It's incredible. If they're around bait fish, if they're chasing threadfin shad in particular, the amount of flash that this thing throws off is remarkable. What happens is that the more flash it throws, one, it helps attract the fish away from the actual live bait fish that they're chasing. The more ghosty your color, they just won't come as far to get it. They don't see it from as large of a distance. These really bright chromy colors or reflective colors will get those fish to come from farther. If you're actually fishing them in the bait fish, you're throwing it into a big ball of shad and working it, the more flash, the more sound, the bait fish will move away from the bait. So if I throw it right in the middle of the shad, give it a couple of good hard twitches and then pause, the shad will actually move out and they'll leave a big open spot and there will be my bait floating all by its lonesome, surrounded by a school of shad. How do bass hunt? When they're coming up on a school of bait fish, they're looking for the one that stands out. That's the one that stands out. It's incredible how many fish I can catch right out of the shad balls just by working a bright bait into the middle and then letting it sit. And they'll come right up through and pick off that one. That re-range is an amazing bait. Now, that said, I have a new favorite this year, which I did not think would happen. I'm not, I'm not taking anything away from the re-range. It's an amazing bait. Uh, and I mean, it's here. I continue to throw it nonstop. It's always on my deck. But this year I've fallen in love with the World Minnow. So Shimano came out with a World Minnow and a World Diver. World Minnow, World Diver. Same concept. One is a smaller bill, World Minnow. One is a larger bill, World Diver. Slightly different baits, however. Three hooked, a little more slender. Two hooked, a little more round. But very similar concept. Both of these baits, can you see inside the head? Do you see the flash boost? Do you see something flickering even when I'm holding the bait still? That is new technology and that is amazing. And that is what has just moved this bait up the ranks for me. Uh, I have destroyed fish on this bait this year. I caught so many fish this spring. I caught some absolute giants uh, and it's even better in the fall when they're actively chasing schooling bait. What makes this so unique, it's actually easier to see in the World Diver because this one's clear, is a little piece of metallic material in there and it's suspended on springs. So when I work a bait and then I let it sit, it just sits, it's paused. But in this bait, that little metallic piece continues to flicker. I mean, it's throwing light while sitting still. And we all know that secondary action on any lure is key. What I mean by that is a swim bait just has a paddle tail. Some of you know this, some of you may not. A paddle tail back there kicking, that's primary action. That's what a paddle tail swim bait has, primary action. There's no secondary action. What makes a thread fin shad different than a paddle tail swim bait, aside from being alive, is that its fins are moving, 
Its gills are flaring. There's light shining off of its scales. There's secondary action. Secondary action is what makes one appear real and the other appear as an imitator. Now, most imitators are still good enough to catch a bass most of the time, but at any time you can add secondary action, it just takes it to the next level. That sitting in there flashing is incredible secondary action. That is not a gimmick. I have seen that work. Uh, I caught a giant this spring. I've already talked about this fish in other videos because this, I'll never forget this fish. It's one of those fish that's just imprinted on my brain. I will die remembering that fish. I had a huge smallmouth come up right on the side of the boat, just under the surface, all flared up. And it's a situation I've seen so many times over the years. That giant fish pops up right at the boat. They see the boat and they just peel off. If you'd had 10 more feet, maybe you could have caught them. I had nowhere to go. I gave that bait one twitch and then I did nothing. But I know that that flash boost was sitting there flickering. And this fish that by all rights, you know, six, seven feet away from me should have bailed, full commitment. Full send, just destroyed. It was on a world minnow. It was on this world minnow, actually. That bait right there. Just destroyed it. It was incredible. And I got that giant smallmouth in the boat. And there was no question in my mind that that was a fish I would not have caught if I didn't have that bait in that moment. I've just seen it too many times where they bail off. So that world minnow and that world diver are amazing baits uh, and they're they're great all the time but again i have baits that fit categories for me and for me all that flash that bright movement when you're working that bait hard this bait has a lot of body roll if you can see the shape of this bait very flat sided very tall this is a bait that rolls as you work it and when they do that that shines light. So outside of that flash boost in there, it's just throwing light anyway, much like that re-range. Those baits have incredible drawing power. And for me, they shine working them fast, working them with shorter pauses up to maybe a three or four second pause. After the water starts to get really cold, my personal style switches and I start to lean to these other baits. And that's about what we're going to get into. Uh, but again, shallower world minnow, deeper world diver. One other thing I'm gonna say about these baits, every bait sits differently in the water and people overlook that, man, do they overlook that. They sit differently and they behave differently. Some float, some sink. The world minnow sits truly flat in the water. Now this is neither good nor bad, I just want you to be aware of it, okay? World Diver sits almost flat. It sits like there, almost flat. The reason that's going to matter is it's just something I always want in the back of your mind. Because take a bait like a uh, Vision 110 Plus One. It's gonna sit about like that. 110 Plus Two sits like this. 110 Plus One, 110. Angled though. Every bait is different. If you're ever out on the water, and everything seems right, you're trying to make changes, you're catching fish, but maybe you're, you're catching fish, but you're hooking them on the outside, or you're only getting them with one hook right on, the, right on the tail hook. Something's just not quite right. We play with color a lot, and we're going to get to that. That's definitely the main thing. But how a bait sits is also a thing, and everyone overlooks that. So just in the back of your mind, know if you ever need to dial in a pattern, Pay attention to how your baits are sitting in the water and don't be afraid to try one that sits flat or one that sits really steep just to give them something different. Okay, now as we start transitioning farther into fall, water temperatures start coming down, I make this hard switch into the Mega Bass Vision series. Uh, those are my bread and butter baits, fall, through winter. Now again, you can fish them any time of year. They're fantastic baits, absolutely incredible. I would say that the Vision 110 is probably the most refined jerkbait ever made from any brand. 
um, incredible baits and you could fish them 365 days a year. But I like those bold profiles, bigger profiles, lots of flash, lots of movement uh, to pull fish out of those schooling situations. I feel like I really dial that in by using other baits. But when my temps start to come down, I go the flip other way. Those other baits, they work. You can use them 365 days a year, but I think that those Vision series of baits by Mega Bass take it to the next level. So as my water temps start to cool and how aggressive I am with the bait starts to change, longer pauses. As that starts to change, Visions just completely take over for me. So the main bait is the Mega Bass Vision 110. Okay, those are the same bait. The Vision 110, I'm gonna put this over here. I put this one out for a reason. It's got different hooks on it. We're gonna talk about that. I'm setting it to the side so I remember to come back. The Vision 110 is just the baseline bait that everything else is judged by. Uh, the same way we talk about like a G Loomis NRX Plus and we say that is the bar that the industry got set on rods and everyone tries to meet or exceed that. Like that's the bar, where are you compared to that? That's how a jerk bait is. Vision 110, that's the jerk bait. All these other companies build jerk baits one way or the other, but that's like, that's the baseline. There's a reason for that. They're so balanced, they're so refined and they catch so many fish. So you've got the 110 and then you've got the 110 plus one. Okay, same as the others, it's the bill size. See the difference? Now, in this bait, it's also bill angle. So this one sits fairly flat. It's got a little bit of angle to it. This one sits much steeper. Now there's also a Vision 110 plus two, and I've got a stack of them over here. The plus two has an even larger bill, sits even steeper. But I'm trying to make this simple for you. If you're throwing a jerk bait, 90% of guys are either going to use a Vision 110 or a 110 plus one. The 110 plus two is only for the guy who's, there are some lakes, typically Highland Reservoirs, where the bass just like to be down deep. If you're that guy, you already know it. You're like, I need the deepest jerk bait I can get. If you're not that guy or you're wondering, you're not that guy. Use a 110 plus one when you need to fish deeper because it will get down and it will pull fish up to the bait. Uh, it's a more specific situation where you need a plus two. There's definitely a situation, but for the average guy, shallow, deep, very simple. To take it one step further, there's also a 110 junior, okay? Same bait, just smaller. And then there is a 110 Junior plus one, same deal. This has to do with matching the size of the bait fish in your lake. The Vision 110, that's the main bait. That's the bread and butter bait. But more and more and more, I have spent a ton of time throwing the 110 plus one, or excuse me, the 110 Junior and the 110 Junior plus one. Uh, they are just special baits. Once in a while, you run into a bait that has it. That's what I like to call it, it. It's got that, sorry, there's a bunch of boats running right here. They're distracting me. It's got that magical something. It's got whatever it is that bass just react to. The Vision 110 is one of those baits. It's got it. The 110 Junior, and specifically the 110 Junior plus one has got it. And then that Shimano World Minnow has got it. There's just something magical about certain baits where they just outshine other baits and they just work. Fish just respond to them differently. So that 110 Junior plus one, it's just one of those baits. Now this, we're gonna come back to color, but I'm gonna just hold this one up here for a second. I pulled out a bunch of my favorite colors but just this guy right here, that is like the most overlooked color. I don't know that I've ever seen another soul. When I got on somebody's boat and we're going out to throw jerk baits 
Everybody's got their favorite color tied on. I don't think I've ever seen somebody else with that color tied on. I'll link it in the video description, but I smash on that color. Very simple, like a pearl fading to a chrome to a black. I smash on that one. Just talking, catching numbers of fish. Uh, just a killer color for me that's overlooked. Like my main, main colors, matte shad. That one crushes. Again, we're coming back to color. I don't want to go down that rabbit hole too deep right now, but you understand those first few baits. We've got baits that are very flashy, very aggressive, and then we've got baits that are really natural, really dialed. We're going to go into some niche baits here in a second, but before I do, coming back to these guys, I want to talk more about how slowly you can work them as we go through the season. Uh, as we're first cooling down again super aggressive a lot of movement fast pops short breaks as that water temp really starts to drop and the bait fish start to be more lethargic the bass will start to be more lethargic too now we're talking like no, mid-november end of november like all of a sudden it goes from being cool and a fall fun bite to, to feeling like winter's about to be here, right? All of a sudden, it's not hoodie weather, it's jacket weather. When that switch happens, that's when the slowdown happens. So I go from this pop, pop, pause, pop, pause, pop, 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 pop pause, to like twitch. Twitch, twitch. And I do, I mix either one, two, or three twitches. That really is what I use, and it's at random. It's not like I twitch three times and then wait. It's either one, two, or three, completely random. But twitch, twitch, wait. And I'll wait long periods of time. As we get into winter, I wait even longer. The reason why is that when the fish are lethargic, they tend to be laying on the bottom. Not all, some are suspended, but most are just down laying on bottom. You work that jerk bait, and then you just let it hold, and it just sits there. If there's a bass on bottom four feet away, and this bait's ch -ch 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 -ch, and he's aggressive, he'll shoot up and get it. But as that water temp is cooling, if it's going that fast, he just, he just lets it go. If I work it slower and then pause it, that fish will start to rise. He'll take his sweet time. The colder the water, the longer it takes that fish to rise. But he knows there's food there. So he is rising, and then that next twitch, he smokes it because now he's close enough to take his shot. If he's still four or five feet away, he's not willing to, to make that run to get his shot in that cold water. So it's all about slowing down the cadence to give those fish more time to come to the bait. And the more you need to slow down, the more the refined bait matters. That's where that was headed. I have my more aggressive baits, and then I have my more refined baits. That Vision 110 does an amazing job of just hovering in the water column. Now, depending on your water temperature, that will change the baits. If your water's really hot or really cold, this bait can be perfectly neutral. It'll suspend all day long. Change water temperature and it will sink or rise. That's just because of buoyancy and, and the laws of science. That's how it works. So. They're not going to be perfect in every situation, but there is not a more balanced bait in cold water than a Vision 110. And that's critical because if the bait will truly suspend, you can let it sit for 10, 15, 20 seconds between twitches and it's just hovering there. What you don't want is a bait where you throw it out and you think you're working it perfectly and it floats to the surface. You go to do your next twitch thinking you've been waiting for a fish and pop, you see your bait jerk on the top. Or even worse, you're counting down, you're waiting. Twitch, twitch, I'm gonna count to 10 before my next twitch. You get to 10 and you go to twitch and you're snagged on the bottom because your bait has sunk into the rocks, right? Those things matter and again, people overlook it. So when I get into that really cold water, I focus entirely on that vision series if I'm fishing shallower, it's the Vision. If I'm fishing deeper, it's the plus one. But I want a bait that will stay mid-column and those fish can come to it. It makes all the difference in the world. Now, um, quickly on hook upgrades. 
On some of these baits, it doesn't really matter. My faster moving baits, if I need to upgrade hooks, there's a lot of options because I'm working the bait so quickly that letting them suspend is not an urgent thing. But as that water gets cold, like we just talked about, getting it to hover matters. So the biggest issue is for the Vision 110. For the Vision series, it's really hard to get replacement hooks. Uh, you know, over time, you're gonna catch a lot of fish. You're gonna wear out hooks. You're gonna bend them out or break them, right? It just happens over time and fishing success. You'll need to change your hooks. And a lot of people are afraid to mess with the hooks on the Visions because they don't wanna screw up that balance, right? They want them to suspend. So a few years ago, we went through all sorts of components. We found our favorite hooks, which is this Aaron Martin's Nano Finesse Gamakatsu. This is what we use to upgrade on the Visions. And we went through and weighed all of the components, all the split rings, everything, to get a perfect match. So it's a very specific set of sizes to get the weight right. In the video description, I won't even try and describe it, but in the description, I'll put like Vision 110 hook upgrades and the exact hook and the size, the split ring, the size that we use to perfectly match and keep a bait suspending with upgraded hooks. That was why I left that bait out because that is a very important piece of the puzzle. If you start changing hooks after you've used the bait for a while, you can mess the bait up very easily. All right, three niche baits and then we'll talk color. Color is like the peak of this video. Oh, and we need to talk rods and gear too. I've got something we have not talked about in the past with rods. Uh, three niche baits, this little guy right here. Again, we're talking about, you know, standard size, deep divers, and then like with that 110 Junior, smaller baits. This is a bait, I talked about this earlier this fall. Let me get just a regular size bait. Here's a Vision 110, that's a good thing to compare to. This is a 13 fishing whipper snapper. Look how tiny that guy is, tiny, tiny. If I'm on a lake where they're chasing little bait fish in the fall, and this happens a lot. In fact, we just did a dedicated video about targeting fish that are eating little tiny bait. That is the best jerk bait I have found for targeting those fish. It's a bait that needs to be worked aggressively and fast. So it's an early season bait uh, through about October, early November. But if they're on small bait, that little 13 whippersnapper is a killer bait and it's an inexpensive bait too. It's a really, really good option. Now it does, it comes in a standard size also and it sits about like that in the water for what that's worth, just so you have it in the back of your mind. Granted with this one, it's not like they're all there are alternatives. It's, it's the bait that I found that works well in that tiny size class. So whether you want a flat bait or not, that's the one I found. I don't really have alternatives for it, but I'm always looking. But again, the whippersnapper comes in two sizes, a standard size, and then that little guy that I think is so special. And again, we'll link that in the description. Next one, the Demiki Slim Jack. This is a cool bait. And this is a cool bait. See how tiny the bill is? Here's why. This bait is unique because you can fish it shallower than all of the other baits. It is not a perfectly balanced bait. It's not a bait that you're gonna throw out there and work it and let it sit and suspend. This is an aggressive bait. If you are in a situation, just like that last one was for if they're eating tiny bait, if you're in a situation where your bass corral bait fish into coves and they corral them shallow, we've all had this happen. You're on a good bite, you're catching them, They've got the bait held in like four to six feet of water. You're crushing them on a jerk bait. They push them back into a pocket. You got to throw your jerk bait in there, twitch, twitch, and you hit bottom. Reel up, get the junk off, throw it back out, twitch, you're on bottom. You just can't throw a jerk bait. It's too shallow. Happens to me all the time. It happens every fall. When that happens, it's not that the jerk bait wouldn't smash those fish, it's that you can't get a jerk bait in there and be able to work it. It just won't work. The water's too shallow. Insert the Demiki Slim Jack. This bait fishes in shallow, shallow water. If they push that bait dirt shallow and you're looking for a bait to get in there, that is your bait. 
period. You can fish it fast, you can fish it aggressive, and you can hammer those fish way up shallow, way up tight, where you can't throw any other jerk bait. Uh, and it's a very strong bait. Like it can take a beating back in that shallow stuff. Uh, the only thing about it is it's a very fast rise and it's a nose first rise, which I don't care for. That's why to me, this is not a slow working methodical bait. Uh, that's just not what it is. This is an aggressive, right? You're working that thing. It doesn't matter that it wants to rise because you're never letting it sit long enough for that to happen. And these fish will just plow it. Last but not least is the Rapala Shadow Wraps. And there's a standard shadow wrap and then there's a deep, same deal, it's the bill, okay? The deal with the shadow wrap is they're a great bait, they've got some killer colors, but what makes it unique is that it's a slow sinking bait, intentionally, like right on it. Rapala Shadow Wrap 11, slow sinking. What makes that special is that's a countdown bait, meaning I'm doing my thing, I'm going down the bank and I get to a deep spot and I can see on my live that there's fish in 14 feet of water. I can't get my jerk bait down there. Well, yes you can. You can throw your shadow wrap and you can just let it slow sink. Get it down there and then work it. So the difference between why do you need a standard and a deep and a bait that sinks? The reason why is if you count it down on fish and you wanna fish it say along a deep edge, maybe along the base of a bluff or something, this one will want to stay down because of the larger lip. Once you're down there and you start working it, it wants to hold its depth. Whereas this one will begin to rise as you're working it just because of the size of the bill. So if it's an occasional countdown thing, use the standard. If you're really trying to get it down and stay down and reach some unique fish, you use that deeper diver. That's it for baits, that's it. And it's not even as complicated as it sounded, right? Early season, late season, and then a couple of niches. Uh, and, and there's something in there that will make a huge difference for you. It just will. You can catch giants on jerk baits. My biggest jerk bait fish is over 12 pounds. Uh, the jerk bait does an amazing job of firing fish up, getting them to feed. And one of the coolest things about that, and I didn't even talk about this, is that giant fish, like true giants. You know, when we were on the West Coast, we had trout eaters. Bass that eat trout only eat trout. That's it. That's what they eat. But there are very small windows in the spring and the fall where those giants will mix in with regular sized fish. They enter those schools. Nobody ever catches them when they do that because they're trout eaters. That's what they eat. But if you can use a jerk bait and you can catch a one pounder out of that school and you throw back in, you catch a three pounder, you throw back in, you catch a one pounder, you throw back in, you get a two pounder. That big one that's in that school that doesn't eat anything but trout will get caught up in the chaos going on of these fish eating and getting caught. They get caught up in that. And for a split second, they will make a mistake and they will commit and eat that little jerk bait that you just pitched in to a school of one and two and three and four pounders. And all of a sudden out of the middle of that chaos, I'm speaking from an experience here, comes a 12 pounder. It can happen. It's happened to me, it can happen to you. Jerkbait fishing is awesome. Now, I wanna talk color and then I'm gonna talk gear. Color is so overlooked and I've talked about this earlier this spring, earlier this fall. Uh, there are my main colors and then there are crazy colors and I want you to understand the difference and I'm gonna show you some of my favorites. Uh, if I'm just trying to get bit, so, in my opinion, when it comes to color, like Mega Bass sets the bar, they just own color. Uh, but there are really good options from every one of these lines. There are some killer options. But I'm gonna use Mega Bass just for some examples here. A Tennessee Shad, very natural, but a little bit of chrome. Matte Shad, very natural and completely dull. Uh, the matte colors, this came out of the Great Lakes. So I like a lot of flash. I like to draw fish, but I like that 
when they're actively chasing bait fish. If they're not active, if they're not actively chasing, blowing up swirls on the surface, dull colors can be the deal because a lot of flash, especially in crystal clear water, like the Great Lakes, truly crystal clear water, a fish will be interested, but a bait will flash and they're not used to flash in crystal clear water, they'll spook off. And that's where these matte colors came from to try and get those fish to commit in that really, really clear water. But either way, whether it's a matte finish or a standard finish, those natural colors get a lot of bites. They get the most bites. At like, here's one from Shimano in the World Minnow. Very natural color, just a faint scale pattern, pearl belly, kind of a brown back. Here's... There's one in the re-range, just as plain and as, as dull as you can get, just a natural color. Those are your numbers baits. Those are the baits that I trust to tell me whether or not there is a jerkbait bite. But after that, once I establish a jerkbait bite, I immediately go to weird color. Oh, one other one, hold on. Pro Blue. And whether that's Pro Blue or Pro Blue 2 with that orange shot, that's, a, that's the difference, by the way, between Pro Blue and Pro Blue 2. That little orange shot right there. But that is, when I was on the West Coast, hands down my number one color. Uh, when I'm up North, that is my number one color. When I've been out West, that is my number one color. So it doesn't have to be a dull brown, right? A dull blue, just a very natural color. But the second I have established, yes, they will eat a jerkbait. I immediately turn to bold colors. The reason why is that bold colors can find the magic bite. Now, if I cycle through a couple of bold colors and my bite goes away, I go back to my natural color and I stay there all day. But this is how I end up with a box of Vision 110 Juniors. This is how I end up with boxes because I'm fanatical about jerk baits. And I've learned that there are my baits to get bit and there are baits to make magic happen. Once you've got them eating a jerk bait, if you start cycling the bold, the crazy colors, sometimes, not every day, again, if it doesn't work, I immediately go back to my natural color and I stay there the rest of the day. But if I come out the next day and my jerk bait bite's still there, I try again. Because what will happen is I'll be going down a bank and I'll be catching a jerkbait fish every 100 feet, right? There's a good jerkbait bite. I'll switch and all of a sudden I'm throwing elegy bone, bright chartreuse. And all of a sudden I go from getting bit every 100 feet to three in a row on the same cast. 20 feet down, get another one. 10 feet down, get another one. 10 feet down, catch four in a row my bite will just skyrocket. You can dial in. I don't know why this is. I just have done it over and over again. They will just be losing their minds on a bold color. So I just grabbed a bunch of examples of Elegy Bone. It's probably the first one that I tie on all the time. There's another one that I just love right there. Here's another one. Just see, they're just bold colors. They're all different. Rapala, Clown. Just as bold as it gets. Uh, here's one that Rerange came out with this year. Jackal came out in the Rerange. I crushed them on Chickamauga this spring. We had a flush of muddy water come in and my jerkbait bite just went flat. And I went to this and just massacred them. Absolutely massacred them. Now it doesn't have to be, I turned to a lot of chartreuses. I'm sure you noticed that right away. Like, do you see the common thread here, right? I love chartreuse, that's my favorite bold color, but it doesn't have to be chartreuse. Another one to think about is the pearls and the whites. White is an extremely bold color, especially in clearer water, right? If the water is clear, you can see white from 50 yards away. It is a bold color. It is just as bold as a chartreuse, just as bold. So don't think that Bold means bright chartreuse or bright orange. It can also just be white. That can be such 
a killer color to dial in a bite. And then again, if the fish aren't doing it on today, just backtrack. Just go back to the mat shad you were already throwing. No harm, no foul. It only takes 20, 30 minutes to find out if this is gonna be an out of control epic bite or it's just gonna be a good jerk bait day. But that's how I dial it in. So in the description, uh, with all of these, I will give you my favorite, hopefully there's enough room in the description. We can only do so much, but if there's room, I'll give you my favorite colors for these baits, like my standard color, and then I'll give you my favorite really aggressive color. Uh, like the world minnow, this one here. I've done so much damage on that one. It's got that red head. I don't know why that one crushes. It crushes. That's what I caught that giant on. So I caught dozens of other fish on. Uh, there's just these bold colors that just work. So again, I'll link all that. Now, jerkbait rods and the gear and the line. This is as critical as the baits. You already know what's in my hand if you've ever watched me talk about a jerkbait. Shimano X-Pride, 610, medium. To me, that is the gold standard of jerkbait rod. That is the baddest rod there is for throwing a jerkbait. Uh, I just do remarkably with that rod. Jerkbait rods, with a lot of techniques, I'll tell you, you know, here's my favorite rod, but you could do it with a few different things. The jerkbait is one technique where the rod is so critical, so critical. It's like a swim bait. You have to have a good swim bait rod to throw a big swim bait. You have to have the right jerkbait rod if you wanna consistently catch jerkbait fish because it is such a hard combination. You have to have a very crisp tip section to get the baits to dart without that little bit of swim. It's very hard to get them to start and stop perfectly that takes a very specific rod. That's hard enough. Once you hook those fish, it can't be a pool cue. So this has to give way to some serious flex because you need such a crisp tip section to work the bait, but you need such a soft rod to keep those light wire trebles hooked into a great big fish who's thrashing. So finding that combination is almost impossible. The X-Pride is my favorite rod for doing that. And hopefully they're available. They come and go. I will link it in the video description. They come and go. Sometimes you can get them, sometimes you can't, but that is an unbelievable rod. I pair it to an Aldebaran, and then I typically pair it to straight 10 pound fluorocarbon. And this has been on here a while, so I'm hoping it's going to show you what I want to show you. Let me find the end here. There it is. Yes, it is coily. I love 10 pound flora. I also use 12 pound. It just depends on how big a fish I think I'm catching or how clear my water is. Like Great Lakes, I throw 10. Chickamauga, I throw 12. Uh, subtle difference, but it's just a little more confidence that if they're headed into cover, I can pull back against them. As critical as the rod and the reel are. So I use an Aldebaran because it's very lightweight and it just makes this combo amazing. And it can throw these jerk baits so well. But just a smaller bait caster. Like here, this is the Shimano Corrado 610 medium. So in the Corrado line, you're saving a bunch of money over an X Pride. Uh, and all that's changed is it just weighs a little bit more. It's just not as magical in the hand, if you will, as an X-Pride Aldebaran. But here, it's a Corrado paired with a Corrado 70 MGL. Perfect for throwing these baits. Perfect, it's the exact same action. Perfect for working the baits. It just weighs a slightly more in your hand, but you save a bunch of money. So killer, I'm not gonna say budget option, because it's still a fairly expensive combo, but uh, the bass chasing right here, Look at that. I don't know if that was on camera or not. Uh, I don't know, we'll call that a mid-priced combo. And then in the video description, I'll give you a true budget combo too. And then the other one, we're coming back to this line. The other one, and this is something we skip over a lot, is some people prefer to throw a jerk bait on spinning. I mostly use casting gear. For me, the only time I personally use spinning is when I want such a good jerk bait bite <laughs> that my arm is worn out. I'm not kidding. I'm just done. My arm's just wiped. 
I've had all the fun I can have, I switch over to spinning so that I can keep going. But over the years, I've spent a lot of time looking for the right spinning rod to throw a jerk bait. You think it's hard to find the right bait caster for a jerk bait? It's even harder to find the right spinning rod. The one, literally the one that I have found is the Mega Bass in the Orochi series, the Orochi Double X, the Ronin. That is the jerk bait spinning rod, in my opinion. And then I pair it up to a Vanford, Shimano Vanford. Um, and you can fish it super light braid to leader, or you can fish straight fluoro. That's your prerogative. There's a time and a place for both. If you're fishing braid to leader, you can be more subtle with your twitches because there's no give in the line. So it'll be really crisp movements. Um, fluoro, you just have to hit them a little bit harder. Just a slight, slight difference, but both can be good. Really clear water. I think fluoro will outshine braid to leader. Uh, so I tend to just use flora, especially on my bait casters for this technique. But that brings us to this line. This is the last thing that you must not overlook with a jerk bait. When you're fishing that jerk bait, we want, how many times have I said, crisp movement, perfect pauses, crisp movement, perfect pause. You can do literally everything right. But if you're using old, coily line like this, the line by itself will ruin your cast. The line itself, it's pulled tight when I snap. Now, if it's just a one or two second pause, you'll never know the difference. But if it's a five or 10 second pause, there's time. This line wants to coil back up. It will draw, see this hand moving? It will draw your bait forward to put the coil back in the line. It has memory, it's pulling the bait. So you can have the perfect rod, perfect setup, perfect retrieve, and not know that your line is literally pulling your bait and destroying your presentation. So the way you combat that is either fresh fluoro. I use Sunline Assassin a lot for this technique. I really like FC Sniper. Super FC Sniper, Sunline Sniper. Uh, but the Assassin is cheaper and it lays down really well on the spool. And if I'm changing it out constantly, like if I'm going on a trip and I know I'm on a jerkbait bite, I use Assassin because I know I'm gonna be stripping line off and re-spooling just to avoid this worry. If it's just something that I do once in a while, I'll use Sniper, it's a higher end line. Uh, it's a little more crisp. It will hold a little longer, uh, but it's just one or the other, right? But I love a good fluoro, but I will re-spool way more often for a jerk bait than literally any other presentation because of this. Now, if you're worried about spending, right? Fluorocarbon's not cheap. Um, you can use Assassin to keep your cost down, or you can, at the start of your day, Take your bait, go hook it to something off to the side of the boat ramp, walk out a hundred feet and stretch the line. And that will fix some of the problem. That will pull a lot of this out. Once that line stretches really good, see that? See the difference? Now it doesn't have as much of it. There's still a big coil, but we just eliminated the vast majority of the coil in that line. Look at the end, still coiled up. So that is something you can do. You can stretch it in the morning to fix most of the problem, but not all of the problem. So if you're worried about it, if you want a dialed in bite in cold water where you're going to be pausing, fresh line is critical. Guys, jerk baits are awesome, right? Every once in a while, you guys see me get pumped and fanatical about something. This is one of those things. I love to throw a jerk bait. I own boxes and boxes and boxes because I always want to dial in that bite. I love it. Uh, but you can keep it really simple and you can catch a lot of fish and you can catch big ones right now, all the way through fall, into winter and all the way back into the pre-spawn. Uh, it's an amazing technique and it's not that hard to do. You need to add it to your arsenal. 
Hopefully this answered a lot of questions for you. Hopefully it showed you some of the pitfalls that everybody overlooks. Uh, it's a really fun technique and I really recommend that you guys do it. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and we'll talk to you soon. Thank you.